So, yeah, you're not even on the camera, it's just for me. Okay. Okay, so Brother John, can you please tell me where were you born? In Durban. And uh, what uh, area and suburb did you live in, in Durban? Well, I was uh, five years old when I left there, but I was, uh, my baptism certificate uh, was from Bel Air. Okay, and then um, f from there, where did you go to? Uh, in 1947, before, in you know, January, but that was when I was still six years old, went to Nazareth House in Johannesburg. Okay, and how long did you stay there at Nazareth House? Oh, the, from that 47 to 53, I think, 54. Okay. And after that, uh, Father Usman took me out uh, for uh, more advanced studies and I had to go to Maris Brothers and stay with his parents. Is that the Father Osman who became Bishop Osman? Yes, that's the same Osman. So the Bishop of Johannesburg. But he was a father, he was a newly ordained father then. Okay. And then um, you mentioned something once upon a time about Boy's Town. Yes, the, as I say, he took me about 1953, you know, so I was there. Then 1957, uh, another six, another seven boys came. Okay. They also stayed with his parents and went to Maris Brothers. So I was in Maris Brothers from stand at six to stand at ten. Okay. See, so then of course these others. We were, we were nine of us staying with his parents in 1957. Yo, that's a lot to be yes. staying with. So they, they had a lot to look after them. Yes. And then um, after, what was Boy's Town like? Uh, Boy's Town, uh, now as I say, uh, like I was the first one, like, uh, in 19, before it even started. In 1957 there were nine of us, but Boys Town only started officially in 1958. And uh, with about 28 boys then. See, and, uh, and, but the, I never uh, went to Boys Town, I was, was with his parents uh, in that year, but I used to go weekends and uh, on and off there and holidays. And then, in 1959, I was, I was still around. Yes, in 1959, I went, uh, I spent a year uh, in Boys Town doing uh, matric by correspondence. See, so, so 1959, I was 19. <laughs> <laughs> and then... Uh, what was the purpose of Boys Town? Uh, many orphans, mm -hmm. you know, uh, Father, this was Boys Town in America, and you know about that, uh, and this um, priest in America used to uh, go to courts and uh, save boys from going to jail for one thing or another. He reckon all boys could say, he started Boys Town in America, and it's after that, that uh, Father Osman wanted to start Boys Town on the same, let's call it, for uh, hmm? incorrigible, naughty boys mainly, but uh, what, what he mostly had was uh, orphans, you know, like I was, I uh, never had a mother, and, uh, so I was offered myself, my brother, and my sister, and then, uh, as I say, there were nine of us in 1957. It was 28 in 1958. Then I uh, spent a year there in 1959. And then uh, my idea then why he had me is because I intended to be a priest. Okay. But uh, when I wrote my trick, it was this private school, private, uh, you know, the JMB Joint Matriculation Board. 
And when the results came out in the paper, and I didn't see my name, so I thought I'd fail. You know, and then uh, not realizing then that <laughs> the names in the paper are the government schools, not the private schools. So I went out to work and I worked in various jobs. Uh, I, st I started in the office work mostly. And through my life I did uh, office work, I did sales, the, the road work, and I did uh, factory work. <laughs> if I remember properly, you said you had about 43 different jobs. <laughs> <laughs> yes, some jobs I'd go to one day and then decide, no, it's not the job I'll <laughs> not go back the next day. <laughs> See that? So, so, uh, Two of my jobs, I think, only lasted one day like that. <laughs> was, uh, I was in and out factories and mm, different things. Was, and when I was in my 40s, I don't know, I got to the uh, uh, middle age, uh, what you call it. I got to think now, what am I going to do for the rest of my life? I can't keep switching. <laughs> and then I went through all the different jobs I've been to, no, 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 I don't want that, I don't want that. <laughs> what did I start with at school? Oh, at school I wanted to be a priest. And I thought, I wonder if I could still go for that, I should have been. So I went to speak to my parish priest, and he said, um, at your age now, in so many years and that, <laughs> take a good while to think about it, take a year. Off. And uh, then I went to Father Osmond, you know, the, at this time I was living in Edenvale. And uh, so I went to Father Osmond in Boys Town uh, to speak to him. And he said, I must just follow what my parish priest said, you know, take a year off and pray about it. So that year I was uh, just praying about it, you know, and still working. Towards the end of the year, I went on a retreat with the Cathedral Parish people to Laverna. And this was my first view of a uh, Franciscan in the habit, Father Sam. You know, and uh, it was an old priest, <laughs> something like I am now. <laughs> was that Father Sam Handley? Yes. Okay. And, uh, huh? And I was speaking to him and I said, I asked him, uh, are you retired yet? <laughs> so, so he looked at me with disgust, because I didn't know then that uh, Franciscans don't retire. <laughs> uh, but anyway, there was a little notice on the, the church door there, a small little notice there. Have you ever thought about becoming a Franciscan as a priest? or a brother. And I saw this and I thought, oh, that's a good idea. If I, if I can't get through the studies for priesthood, <laughs> at least I can become a brother. <laughs> and that's how I got there. Uh, and I, I spoke to the priest there and he said, go speak to Father Stan Brennan, who was the nearest to me, because I was staying in Edenvale at the time. And Father Stan in Boxburg was kind of the nearest. And uh, so he arranged for me to come in. So after 43 different jobs, you finally settled down with the Franciscans. <laughs> yes, yes this, is, this is the longest job I've had. <laughs> and do you feel happy and fulfilled as a Franciscan? Happy? Yes. Uh, oh, oh. I don't feel unhappy. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't feel like uh, jumping for joy. My, my body's are old now. It doesn't want to jump anymore. <laughs> but uh, no, I'm quite satisfied. And because uh, I get most of my joy and pleasure with my meditations and contemplations and you know the, with Jesus, so that uh, being deaf. I don't uh, have good communication with others because they don't, I don't hear them. They get frustrated with me not hearing them. And uh, so 
I've got more time to spend on my own than contemplating. Can you explain to me, please, what what is contemplation or meditation? Well, uh, I look at it as uh, three ways: uh, is prayer, you know, which you say aloud or say in your mind, you know, and there's meditation when you actually like do a reading and think uh, about the reading or the prayer and that, and then <laughs> contemplation. Uh, you don't think about anything, you just let the presence of God be there without having to make pictures and use your imagination or anything. It's just purely spiritually inside. <laughs> Do you think that your deafness has helped you to pray better? Uh, oh yes, much more often. Sometimes when there's a group of people that's all talking and I don't know what's being said at all, <laughs> I can go to pray. <laughs> at least Jesus hears me. <laughs> um, so, so, if you had to make a choice again and start all over again, would you still choose the Franciscans? I wouldn't know the Franciscans if I had to start over again. <laughs> uh, but if I had known them, yes. Uh, but probably, because as I say, uh, to, be, to be a brother. You know, because I wanted to be in the church. When I was at school, you know, the little boys in the early teens and that, you know, how naughty they are and things like that. And uh, we used to have confessions every, once every two weeks, you know, and, the, all the, all the, and we went to Mass every day. See, so, yeah, then the day after confessions, with the, all the boys, you know, and the girls would be going to communion. But as the two weeks went on, there were less and less boys going to communion until the final day. <laughs> I'd be the only one. <laughs> and because I was like that, uh, the other boys uh, called me a holy holy and all that jazz. And, the, and then they said I wanted to be a priest. And I said, I didn't say anything about becoming a priest. Uh, the final day, <laughs> uh, before the next confession, I'd be the only boy going and there. Other boys said I uh, wanted to be a priest, and I said, I don't want to say anything. So the idea of becoming a priest was put into my head by the other boys. <laughs> Can you please tell me what's special about being a Franciscan brother? No, I went, you're with the church all the time, you're with God all the time, with Jesus all the time, with. Uh, uh, all the time for prayers and things like that. Yeah. That's uh, the prayer life uh, uh, is the most important part. Okay, uh, for the ordinary life. Uh, I go to different places. I do different jobs. Uh, according to my experiences at work and all that. I mean, 42 different jobs <laughs> it helps me to do. Like when I was in the kraal, in a pen, sorry, at Bester's, and I used to do a lot of work and I used to, I did so much there. And uh, I hear people talking now and then about how busy I was. <laughs> yeah, I'm not so busy as I was there. Anyway, the, all the experiences I had helps me as a brother to do various things for the brotherhood. See, that's uh, the one thing, that's about the personal side. Uh, but to me, all the friars, we are all brothers and very close to each other. And I look at all other friars as close relatives, you know, uh, being brotherhood. So that uh, I'm quite safe with them, I'm quite I'm looked after by them, and I look after them, and I look after the, the, the way of life and that.
Can you tell me what do you particularly like about St. Francis of Assisi? What do I think about St. Francis? What do you particularly like about him? Um, sorry, I, I've got to think about that in a way. Or if you could mention for you a favourite episode in the life of St. Francis that you find particularly attractive? Uh, no, I, I think his prayer life, you know, his communication with God, you know, and that the... Uh, <laughs> he's still, he, well, look at her. He wasn't the saint that I was kind of uh, very close to at the time. I just got to grow with him as time went on, and uh, and I'd say hmm, to me, all saints are my brothers in Jesus. See, and St. Francis is one of my brothers in Jesus. And uh, I look at all saints as uh, very close. And angels too. <laughs> and my own guardian angel. I mentioned to you, gave, gave, uh, gave my angel the name Carol. So sometimes I speak to my angel as <laughs> call <it> Carol. <laughs> <laughs> the, uh, and then, um, I know you have a particular interest in science and physics and the cosmos. Um, can you say something about that? Has that helped you to love God? Uh, God is infinite, you know, and, and in all directions. I mean, the cosmos is kind of infinite because, the, say, the our galaxy has got uh, millions of stars, millions of uh, four, uh, kilometers uh, of light years, and then the, beyond that is other uh, billions of uh, other galaxies. And I said, billions? <laughs> Look around. <laughs> there's millions of stars, and outside there are other galaxies, there's billions of galaxies. And I think, but if our galaxy is so big and there's so many millions of stars and there's so many billions of galaxies, how did God create all this? <laughs> and, uh, and so it gave me more of an idea of his infinity. The more my mind went back uh, and my uh, view of the universe went further and further out and, I could, and then I wondered, what's beyond <laughs> the last stars and that? <laughs> And uh, I never actually found out anybody uh, asking that question, what is beyond the, uh, the last uh, cosmos, the last uh, uh, universe. And um, the thought came to my mind that uh, there's nothing. <laughs> okay, with the last one, there's nothing, because there's no more. <laughs> No, after the billions and billions and billions of uh, galaxies. And I thought, but how can there be nothing? What about the lights from those last ones? Okay, okay, they go out, but that uh, uh, we only a certain distance. What, what's beyond that? <laughs> Just empty space. So I had to ask myself, what is empty space? <laughs> uh, it's nothing. Okay, uh, so nothing can be nothing. So the, <laughs> it's just the presence of God everywhere in the sun. And then, um, what would you say to young men today to encourage them to become a Franciscan brother? I'll tell them the most important thing in life is your future life. In this life, you live for maybe 60 years or 80 years or at the most, and then you go somewhere <laughs> for millions of years. Our cosmos is 14,000 million years. <laughs> so how long will you be in heaven or somewhere else? You know, 14,000 million years again. <laughs> so. Uh, 
being a brother, being a Franciscan, and being working with the church and being close to the, and uh, following your prayer life and uh, developing your own spirituality helps you to uh, think about the future you have. after you pass on <laughs> for the next 14,000 million years <laughs> you want to be so, in some way good and this is why uh, the prayer life is very important for, uh, for anybody to think about what's going to happen to them when they pass on is there anything else important that you th feel you need to say? Uh, you have to repeat it. Is there anything else that you would like to say which you feel is important? What I feel is important? Mm. Uh, regarding what? Anything. I'd say the <laughs> divide my life into my spiritual side and my physical side. Uh, so, what is important, okay, for a, a youngster, for anybody, in the, is to uh, live a spiritual life, you know, to, uh, to do the readings, you know, the uh, uh, office of readings, and morning, evening, and there's seven times a day, and, and, and to go to Mass every day, and go to Communion, to actually receive uh, Jesus at I, uh, when I preach or I talk to people at all about the Blessed Eucharist and uh, about the real presence of Jesus in the Blessed, the blessed Sacrament. And it's important to uh, receive Him uh, personally because He is God and there's only one God. You don't just receive Jesus, you receive the Father, Son and the Holy Spirit because they are one God. And then, uh, faithfully in the prayers, all the prayers, first of all, they uh, develop their love for God and for Jesus, okay? Then they uh, follow the laws of Jesus and tell the two greatest sacraments that Jesus says is to love God and love your neighbor. So, your neighbor is, uh, <laughs> and your brothers, of course, are the closest to love. But then that's uh, loving all other neighbors, so that's even your enemies, uh, if you have enemies. <laughs> we don't usually, usually have enemies, I don't have any at the moment, <laughs> anyway. The, uh, oh, oh, uh, Jesus is to love them all. And uh, when I pray, and I go to communion and I say prayers, I don't just think of it as me, although so many of the hymns as, as I, 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 and me, <laughs> and I think, of, wow, so, so many of the hymns are so personal like that. When, uh, when you're praying, it's not just you, it's everybody. That's, so all these other people go into Holy Communion receiving the same Jesus as I have received. Uh, how close we are, we, we are one, <laughs> see? So uh, we talk about Jesus asking us to love our neighbors, so I love all these uh, other people that also went to communion the way I did. Then I think about all the people in the whole world who went to communion that I am one with. And then I think about uh, everyone, <laughs> whether they're Catholics, uh, Muslims or anything, <laughs> we're all uh, brothers. So. Uh, I make myself one with all everyone, and uh, that, uh, that even the Muslims and B Buddhists and uh, uh, non Catholics or whatever, I've still got the brotherly love for them all because that's what Jesus wants. Thank you very much, Brother John, for sharing all your Thoughts. very personal and intimate experiences. Okay. So, Goodbye and God bless. Okay. Thank you very much. Thanks. Bye bye, guys.